I won the fraternity in 1994 on C. D. Olina. Won the fraternity in 1996 on Playboy McCray. What I remember most about that night was um, I probably cut the three best cows in the cutting, or probably the three best cows maybe that had been cut in Will Rogers. They were outstanding cows, and he was uh, on top of his game. What I remember most about that night is, you know, I won. <laughs> You know, uh, it's just that, you know, it's so special to, to win the fraternity. Yep. Just being part of that group of people that won the fraternity, and, you know, that's pretty small. Oh, well, C.D. Alina was, uh, he was really full of himself. Um, always looking around, nickering. I mean, but the unique thing about him was is when you when you worked him on a cow, he channeled that energy all towards the cow. Playboy McCray, you know, he was a gelding, and he was more playboy to me than dual pep. He, you know, kind of had a, he wasn't the prettiest horse. He had a really good body on him and stuff, but he, you know, he was um, just a, 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 a good-minded horse. He wasn't ill. And uh, probably with him, the biggest thing with him, he was an athlete. Well, we bred um, C. Chickasan Badger to Doc Lena, so he was raised by Bobby Pigeon at Dogwood Farms in Tennessee. And he was, we, I think we starred him at Bar H, and he didn't really start any different than anything else, you know, he just kind of didn't feel like he was anything special till about 60 days on a cow. And when he figured out what a cow is about, I, 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 to this day, don't think I've had a two-year-old that would do as much on a cow as he would. Well, I think I got, uh, how I got Playboy McCray is just because Kay Floyd bred to Dual Pep, the mother. And, um, you know, she sent us that horse. I think he was a gelding already. And we had him as two-year-old his year. And, you know, it wasn't like, again, anything special. We just trained him. Um, he was an athlete, um, but that's, you know, I didn't know he was special until he won the fraternity. Hard. Winning in Will Rogers is, is special because it's so hard to do. I mean, you can have, to be able to, for all those variables to come together on that finals night, there's a lot of things have to be going your way. And I think that's what makes it unique and makes it special is it's, you know, all you gotta do is cut one bad cow or your horse not be maybe quite as good as he needs to be on the first cow. I mean, just for all those different variables to, to you know, come together on that night, yeah, things really gotta be going your way. It's just not easy to do. It's just gotta be, everything's lined up just right. Your horse is good. I, I remember, the cows I wanted to cut, they were easy to find. They were just like right there for some reason. You know, I turn around and here's a, this one. I turn around and here's this one. The ones we talked about and it just works. And, and the horse needs to be on. Because I've been there before at other times, you know, and you have a bobble. I don't know what I bought with after. Well, that was the year the girls were born, so I know probably I bought a lot of diapers. And then a few years later, we bought a piece of property just up the road from Bar H that where my mother-in-law lives. There was 11 acres in a house, and then we fixed it up. For me personally, the toughest thing about showing Will Rogers on finals night is uh, not trying too hard. Just keeping your mindset relaxed and just awesome. doing the best doing the best that uh, the situation of uh, the make the most of the situation that presents itself well the toughest thing to show in finals night really is is getting there and again just just uh, Things are going to happen the way they're going to happen. I mean, you just don't know how it's going to be. So 
just try to be positive. Step up like the, step up and just try to control your nerves and just step up and go show like you don't have a care in the world. And that's the hardest part. And then using show your with heart, using your head about yeah. how you get your horse prepared, how you work them. You know, I found that. I don't. People to ask me how do you how do you how do you how do you prepare your horse or work your horse for the finals, and I was like, well, I work them just like I have for the first go around, second go around the semis. I mean, I don't really think. All right, now I've got to step them up. I mean, I try to keep them. I try to keep the horses that are shown, you know, as correct as as I could all the way through training, and I kind of would keep the same thought process and the same program all the way through the show. Yeah, it's, yeah well, it's not the best horse, it's the best run that wins the fraternity. Yeah. Not the best horse, it's just the best run. Well, I tease people, I was 40 when I won the fraternity, so I tell people it kept me from ha having a midlife crisis. <laughs> it, but other than that, you know, it, 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 it's very satisfying to know that, you know, I think everybody that trains young horses, that's your goal. And, and I was well aware of that the run I had that night. I tell people, I say, you know, it could have been the first go around and I'd have felt great for 24 hours until I rode to the herd the second time. But, you know, um, you know, we happened to have it on the right night. So Monday morning we went back to work, you know, started all over again, you know, cause we know that the next time you ride to the herd, it probably is not gonna be as good as the last time. And, you know, so you just go do it. I went in the fraternity, did it change my life at all? I really don't think so. It just uh, the satisfaction of knowing that you have done, you know, the ultimate in training young horses. The win in the fraternity, you know, you get to join that club and that'll always be there. And then you're uh, looking back at looking at the time, you know, you don't, you know, you don't realize how hard it was or how lucky you were to win it. But now it's been, you know, going 20 some years now and we're still trying to do it again. I want to win it again. So just the satisfaction of winning it. Well, to me, the run, I think I, other than, of course, we all have, you know, find the runs we have memorable, but um, the run that um, impressed me the most at the fraternity here in the last 20 years would have to be Phil Hansen's run. I mean, that mare was dynamic that night. Most memorable run? You know, and I've, I've, I think I've watched every fraternity since 1984, since I've been moved to the States. And, you know, it's always interesting to see who wins, but I, for me, it's Winston's. Winston's run. I mean, that was, I was helping, but to me, that was, that was my, the best run. And, you know, they marked a 25, but to me, they could have marked that run. He would have, he would have won nowadays, no problem. That same run could win any time. Well, I think the quality and the depth of the horses has certainly improved. Um, I think we've lost a little of the excitement in the building that you used to feel in there. Um, you know, the semis used to be a sold out performance and we don't have that as much anymore. Uh, but um, we have so many young trainers that used to be like back when we first moved, there was a group of guys that could train a horse and a group of guys that could show a horse and a few that could do both. And now we got 50 of them that can train and show and They've been doing it since they were in youth. And like I said, we had to go through the whole process. I probably messed up more cuts in the Coliseum than anybody trying to figure out how to cut a cow because I mean, it was like a mystery, you know? I mean, you'd listen to them guys, and they talk about having to get wide on the cow to get this particular kind of cow cut. And, you know, for me, when I finally decided, you know what, I'm just gonna get out behind it and drive it out and cut the darn thing. Cause I was, <laughs> I was chasing them through to the back fence you know, uh, but there's just a whole group of guys that, that do a great job of all of them. They got youth, they got great timing, uh, they got the work ethic, they got good horses, and 
I think they're just, um, you know, I miss the excitement that was in the building, but, um, you know, I think I would have to say there's just so much more depth to the quality of horses that we see today. For me, uh, the what's changed at the fraternity is just that it's it's still tough, but it's just the depth and quality of horse and rider. There's so much more. What made the finals in the past, you know, there's still those horses that won that win and run is still would be very competitive. But just it's the depth and quality of the way the horses are trained and how many there are. Where it used to be a 72 horse, you could go all the way. Now you need a three or four horse to go all the way. Paul Hansma upward, Playboy McRae, owner Kay Floyd from Stephenville, Texas. This horse is a gilded son of the great Dual Pip and out of Kay Floyd's great mare, Playboy's Madeira, the all-time leading money-earning mare in the NCHA history. Hey, hey, watch us stop here on this horse. Tell you what, this run is a very, very precise run. If you notice, that cow never gets away and he never misses an inch. Showing a lot of style right there. Good quit. Good quit. Okay, here's another angle. Now help us through this, Chubby. You see here he makes his cut real good and quiet. If you'll watch, this cow never gets an advantage on Paul's horse. Look at this. He's got complete control, and everything's happening in the middle with the cow turning toward him, trying to get back to the herd, but his horse is countering every move precisely, and that's what the judges are looking for. Catching a lot of points for degree of difficulty, right? It's, it's a great run. It's one of the better runs I've seen at the NCHA fraternity. Now, he hard work here on his final cut. Pressure's got to be on him. Here you go. Perfect cow. Look at this, Shelly. What a nice horse. Paul looks very serious here, too. One of the coolest riders in the business right here. Wow, and he knows he's done good, huh? He's <laughs> <It's> pretty excited <laughs> at this point. Whoop. Now he's now letting he's the pressure gonna, off. Yep. <laughs> it's hard to hold your breath for two and a half minutes, right? You, it's and almost a 223. A, well, that went to the lead big time. Boy, did it One ever, and he knows left. it. And his help knows it, right? The Open Futurity Champion, Playboy McRae, Paul Hansma, a 223. How sweet was that? No sweeter. It can't get any sweeter. What fun. Oh, uh, man. I just can't believe the feeling. The only thing that pales is, is to my wife and my two little girls. It's, it's like this is the third greatest thing that ever happened to me. The pinnacle of the cutting is sweet. 
Congratulations, Paul Hans.